What is up, guys? Welcome to the Techonomics Podcast. It's me, Paul from Non Apple Fan. I'm joined with Chris, the good old gamer, a co host as always. And we have a special guest, Keith from WCCF Tech. What's up, Keith? Hey, guys. How's it going? Um, hey. Yeah. So, so, so you, you, you're going to be, um, you're going to be, uh, a busy boy in like two weeks time two weeks time they're gonna the 6700 xt is out so that's probably what we're going to talk about today yeah. um yeah you do all you do all the reviews on the website so uh two weeks time Ish. oh yeah oh yeah is, right have, now have they have they, ta- gave, they gave the they gave the official launch date right it was like the 18th or something like yes. that. yes yes 18th was the official launch date so that's official. Yeah. I can talk about that part. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we, we got to kind of walk around that, yeah. which uh, I, I do want to shout, give uh, Celso a shout out because he was the one who said middle of March. I think he said the 17th. So he was really, really close mm-hmm. on his uh, speculation or leak or whatever. And uh, me and Paul, we, we didn't think that was going to happen, honestly. So I, I'm going to eat my hat and be like, well done. Tip my hat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What, what put us off? I don't know whether Keith, you, you followed what Lisa Sue says. Usually yes. when AMD says stuff like, uh, you know, first half or, you know, uh, you know, by summer, what they tend to mean is like, you know, the, the very final last. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So at CES, she said uh, by the first half and like usually she why doing she just say Q1 like that's that was what was kind of putting me off with that one. Like usually she'd say Q1 and she didn't. So then and then, you know, usually. I've started to hear things. Um, I hadn't heard anything. I hadn't heard any any rumblings. And um, then we didn't see any boxes or like, you know, you see, you kind of tend to see people pick filings. Mm-hmm. And kind of the week after me, myself and you did that podcast, we're like, this is not happening, basically. <laughs> <laughs> poof it's happening it's like well yeah yeah that's why i'm tipping my hat it's like well they they got me uh they got me fooled yeah yeah so i seen i did see that they did do a filing then like the next week like they were starting to get them ready so yeah we were kind of egg on our chin but um what was i gonna say so what was your first thoughts when you seen the 6700 xt's numbers Keith? uh the numbers um better than i thought they were gonna target for it quite honestly i was predict my personal anticipation because i was anticipating the 40 cus you know based on the leaks Mm -hmm. and the information and you know just to throw this out there a lot of people uh a lot of these numbers we can kind of guess at right you know we can anticipate based on previous patterns and such and that was about where i expected um But I had reservations because of the, of course, smaller memory bus that we were anticipating. Mm -hmm. So the 192 bit. But how much did the Infinity Cache kick back on there? Because, I mean, it showed that it was a pretty big deal for, you know, big Navi. So uh, some of the things were good. A lot of the numbers all had smart access memory attached to them, uh, um, which Mm -hmm. was interesting. You know, the... The biggest problem I had with the numbers was just like before, it's sometimes it's hard to follow because they show different cards in each graph that they're comparing against. And mm. and I, I get it's to show against like previous generation and then current generation, but it's like at this resolution compared to this previous generation, but compared to the new generation with these particular games, and it's like... <laughs> it's a lot of different cherries to be picking. Yeah. Yeah. And and of course everybody picks their cherries, right? I mean, right. it's it's your product. You're on stage, you've got everybody's attention, and you've worked you, you've invested. Like if you're you're AMD or you're NVIDIA, you've invested in these companies to have your name on their games so that you can then do this. Mm-hmm. So that you can go, this is our game. And then sometimes based on the engines that are used, you can take some of the ones that's got the other guy's name on it and pull them in there too because you just naturally run that game better. So uh, it was all, while it was a little better than expected, I was, there were some things left out that really kind of left me um, almost sad. It was short. It was a short show. Yeah. 18 minutes, I think. 18. Yeah. Minutes. You know, yeah. I had to miss, I didn't get to watch it live because some stuff happened at work and I had to be stuck in an, an event. Um, training people on how to not hurt themselves. <laughs> so, Fair. so I got to I got to listen to it on the drive home to do the recap video that I did. But I was uh, I was surprised by some things that were left out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. More than I was anything else. 
What was your thoughts, Chris, when you seen the numbers? Oh, well, in terms of just the performance, we'll leave out yeah. the, the big elephant. Yeah, we'll get we'll all, that for, all of them. We'll, we'll, we'll save that for later. But in terms of performance, is literally what I called. I'm like, they're targeting 3070. Um, it's the reason why the power consumption were, was what it was. It does mean that 50% performance per watt thing is now completely out the window, though. It's a lie. Uh, yeah. yeah. N- now it's officially a lie on this card because that is not 50% faster than a 5700 XT. Um, so performance was was pretty much where I expected. The one thing, and this ties into the elephant, is number one, I'm surprised they even showed Watch Dogs Legion. I'm surprised mm-hmm. that they even bothered putting that up. That, that was not wise of them from a marketing perspective. Um, but the fact that the card possibly loses in triple a titles to a 3060 ti um that's not good like i never thought this card would ever lose in any game ever to a 3060 ti i figured it would float in between the two and then occasionally beat on the 3070 Mm -hmm. um but for me that's the big sticking point is it loses in some titles to a 3060 ti yeah yeah my 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 initial thoughts were why aren't you showing a 5700 XT? Um, why isn't there a 5700 XT in these graphs, right? right. And, and um, there's there's some thoughts that go through your head when they leave things out, right? Because AMD doesn't show ray tracing numbers. They don't show ray tracing numbers because they're shite at it. That's the reason why. <laughs> can we just can we just all agree, right? <laughs> Here and now, put a fucking pin in it. The reason why they don't show them, like people are all like, "Oh, they're gonna get better with it." Blah blah blah. No, Nvidia does. Nvidia gives more transistors for ray tracing. Therefore, they're gonna be. Maybe they might get quicker in a specific title optimized for them. We've seen it when you do shadows. They're all right, but everything else. Yeah, so they, they didn't talk about ray tracing, and they didn't talk about the fifty seven hundred XD. My worry is that it's not that much faster than a 5700 XT. Like, because I already know that the 5700 XT, the 5700 XT beats the 3060. So, like, it beats right. the 3060. So, where is that in relation to 30? Yeah, 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 I'm, that thing. I'm working on it right now. Like, it's on another <laughs> monitor. I'm looking at the numbers. <laughs> too, so I'm like, yeah. Like, so where is it, and why didn't they show me a 5700 XT? That's that's my question. Um, because you're gonna you're gonna be you, like, who is this for? If it's not for 5700 XT owners, right? Or who Vega 56, or Vega 56, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, who is it? Who who is this? For? Who are you trying to inc- who are you trying to get to upgrade? Uh, uh, somebody with a an RX 480 or a 580? That's no, no, that's double the that price. Money. This isn't for them. I mean, this yeah. is <laughs> basically Vega 64 price. Yeah. That's why it was important to have that in there, in my opinion. And that was one of the things that was missing. Like, Paul, you hit on it with the missing 5700 XT numbers. We're not seeing the generational improvement. Yeah, we're seeing it against their competition. But that's one thing their competition does really good in their marketing. You guys seen it. You guys, I know you've seen it in every showing. The competition shows against themselves. Right. Yeah, they still cherry pick, but they show their customers where they're going, where they could be coming from and going to. Yeah. And it's easier to sell those super high end. The 6900 XT was an easier sell. It was super mm-hmm. high end. You had not, the AMD owners have been waiting for that. Right. You yeah. know, but this one is like middle of the road and mm-hmm. it is expensive. I know we're in a shortage and it's hard to get stuff. I haven't even been able to buy a graphics card. So <laughs> I know <laughs> how it is. I, um, I did. Sorry, I think Chris had the best analogy, right? And I completely agree with him. In fact, I used it in my video today about it, right? Um, and it's complete. Like you're you, you're gonna if you're sitting down with, with with money to buy a graphics card now, and there's no shortage, and everything's at MSRP, right? And you're looking at a 3060 Ti, and that's like 400 ish, right? And then you're looking at a a, a 3070 as 500 ish, right? And then you're looking at a, a 6700 XT. And it's 480. For me, I'm going with the faster card for 20 bucks more, or I'm going for with, with for the slightly slower card at a significant discount. So yeah, for me, it, right. it wasn't they they needed to either pick we're going to destroy the 3060 Ti, it's 400 bucks, or we're going to you know compete with the the the, the 30 the 3070 and it's 430 or 440. And like, just go right where we don't beat it, but like, we're offering you an option. Right. Yeah. So ultimately, what my my whole point was, it actually competes with both. 
Like I just yeah. mentioned, it, it loses to the 3060 Ti. They showed that on their cherry-picked numbers, which means it's going to lose in other titles. Mm-hmm. Um, th- that's what that says to me. It will lose to the 3060 Ti in, in other titles as well. So it's actually in competition with two different tiers of graphics cards because it's a different architecture. Like Keith mentioned earlier, different game engines, different uh, sponsors, that's just the way it goes. Like NVIDIA scales, like a 3060 Ti will never, ever beat a 3070. It's just impossible. Now with AMD, it's going to be kind of hit and miss. Um, the, the trouble is, is when you're competing against two different cards with one, you know, Paul kind of summed it up. You kind of have to pick which one to go after. The problem is you have to, in my eyes, you have to go after the lowest common denominator, especially since AMD is lacking the key features that NVIDIA does. And since you're lacking the features, going after their higher tier card where you're kind of competitive under certain circumstances with it, to me, it's just AMD is just maximizing their profit at the expense of longevity here. Because, yeah, who, who's this for? Because 5,700 XT owners aren't going to want it. Uh, hell, Vega 56 and 64 owners are probably going to be like, eh, it's not that good. It's more money than I spent on my Vega 56. Um, and yeah, RX 580 and 480 people, they're still like, yeah, it's where's my two to $300 card? Come on guys. Mm-hmm. Well, what I will say is that nine, I'd say about 80 to 90% of the Vega 56 owners out there got their Vega 56 for 250 bucks. Right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, yeah. like, yeah. So like when you're looking at that, you're like, right, I got a, f- I, I, the choice I had was an RX 580 for 200 bucks, or I had 250 bucks for a Vega you got, 56. Yeah. You got the 56. Yeah. So which yeah. one, so which one now are you, who, who out of your 20% of the market are you trying to sell this to AMD? Like who just, uh, this was the same with the 5700 XT. I was like, who is this card for? It's not for a Vega. It's once again it, what, the the fifty seven hundred XT wasn't for Vega sixty four owners. wasn't for Vega fifty six owners. wasn't for uh, Orx four eighty or five eighty owners because it was just too damn expensive. So which one was it for? And there was never like they, you know they never showed because they can't they can't go to their own their own audience and go boys if you had like a- Nvidia went for all of you ten sixty owners right which I hated by the way but they went for all of you ten sixty owners. <laughs> Here's the 3060, right? Right. And he didn't do that. <laughs> Maybe the Hawaii and Grenada owners? So oh, the 39, 30, 390X? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, R- R9 290 was uh, 399 with inflation. That That's about right. Yeah. So so for I'm the guys the guys who bought one in, 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 in 2013 and 2014, here's your upgrade. <laughs> it's okay to upgrade it's now. <laughs> it's a an upgrade. <laughs> You see, that's but the I, problem. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh no, keep going. You're you're good. I was saying. See, that's the problem with AMD, right? Is that they kind of took a hiatus and went missing, and then they came back with the with you know Polaris and Vega, and they set a they set the cadence that they always had, which is usually the the big thing is the new performance, and the small thing is like what the flagship used to be, right? Mm-hmm. And then, and then they didn't compete. This is the problem. This is what makes it like it, it, it kind of lies to the consumer and makes it seem like you know it's it's all right because they didn't have a high end card last generation. So like they were like, this is the high end card. It's a fifty seven hundred XT, and everybody went, oh right, it's a it's not it's not a replacement for the RX five eighty. It's not a like yeah, granted, it was way faster, like huge upgrade, right? Huge huge upgrade. Right, it, but you it, basically just hit the point. There, there's nothing AMD-wise to compare it to, so you have to compare it to NVIDIA. And mm-hmm. compared to NVIDIA, that's where, at least at the 399, the 450 would have been different, but at 399, the 5700 XT, it, it found a home in mm-hmm. in that particular market. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was weird they compared it to the 1070 Ti. The 5700 XT? No, the, the 6700 XT. They, they used the, 10, the 1070 Ti. Oh, I missed that part. I didn't actually watch the thing. I just looked at the slides that I needed, and I'm like, I got all the information I need. Well, they compared the ten, the 1070 Ti and the 2080 Super. Yeah, why the 2080 Super as well? Like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna go, go, go ham, go like this is the like the 2080 Super. If you're beating the 2080 Super, do the it's Ti called a 3060 Ti. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, that's what I'm saying. If you're beating the 2080 Super, 
do the 2080 Ti because it's going to yeah, look way better. <laughs> get the big. It's got more RAM. It's got more VRAM than a 2080 Ti, so you yeah. can hey, use yeah. that. Use that for your marketing. I don't. It's weird. It those two cards seem like the weirdest move because I think you you guys y'all you've seen the numbers. You know how the market shifts. How many people bought the 1070 versus a 1070 Ti? The T the 1070 Ti was the refresh. The 2080 yeah. Super was the refresh. Right. And the people that bought a 2080 Super, they're not upgrading again for no. a while. No, I wouldn't think so. They no. bought a $700 card a year and a half ago. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it's still bloody fast. Like, it, it's it's not it's not amazing, but it's still 2060, 2060, 2060, 2060 Ti. That's probably all a graphics card somebody needs right now. And it has DLSS. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And Which, let's get to that one. Let's get to that one. Um, <laughs> Good. Go go to the features. The other reason why AMD cannot charge Nvidia prices. Yeah. Um. What What was your thought of like I I I know we were we we have a we have a group chat and you were like fidelity fidelity FX question mark like to everyone just like, <laughs> trying to see did anybody know whether they were going to talk about it or not. Uh. Yeah. What What was your feeling on that one? Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, guys. Look. And, and and if anybody in the audience has watched any of my stuff, I, I think DLSS is a great thing. The mm -hmm. first iteration, there were hiccups. It was not, it was not where it needed to be. Um, it pulled the, the, the hood over my eyes at first. Cause the first, when I first looked at it, I was looking at the corner watching the frame rates go up. And then once <laughs> I started comparing, you know, side by side, I was like, ah, I mean, I like the one toggle. And then once DLSS two came, like when 1.5, which came out with uh, control, was right. great but there were still some anomalies with it and then you you know some issues in death stranding but as it went when <clears> 2.0 came out it was like mm, this is where it's at right and even if and i know i know how much paul loves uh ray tracing i know how much he loves it <laughs> um, <laughs> but we're not, i'm not gonna talk about that part but the upscaling tech is Man, you know, I, I want to do this thing, and and I took a look at the 6900 XT and the 2080 Ti, and I removed the um, DLSS and looked at like straight ray tracing performance, and then I went back and I did another thing later with the 20 the 3080 and the 6800 XT, and I took away all the performance enhancing drugs and just looked at just raw performance at a, at given resolutions to kind of see where they went, and you wouldn't believe how many people were mad. They were like, "Why didn't you use DLSS?" And I was like, well, I was trying. And they were like, no, people aren't going to buy these cards and not use it in the games that it's there. Especially so, not with our ray tracing on. It makes literally no sense at that point. Well, I didn't even do ray tracing. I just did the regular game. And I didn't oh. realize how many people were just playing the games, like even Cyberpunk, not turning on ray tracing, but they were hitting that DLSS toggle oh, yeah. and just soaking up the frames. It's literally um, the free performance button. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's one of the things like, um yeah you're right i mean i can talk about the 3060 here because the cards out reviews are out we all know how it performs even though i'm still working on the review because it showed up <laughs> after the i don't want to talk about the snow but <laughs> uh, but one of the things in a lot of these games they have dlss and what happens when you turn dlss on on a 3060 that retails for you know 330 what kind of performance are you getting then that's a 12 yeah. gigabyte card what if uh, yeah yeah and so, and for amd to not have an update at all they they yeah it was on a slide but they did they talked about it in the past they said we're working on it we'll give you updates and they were like here's a slide don't ask about it right yeah and, and you nailed it that's <laughs> the dangerous part because once uh dlss is in the majority of games i mean now it's just baked into unreal engine Dude, so anybody in, can just uh that, that game, uh, oh, it's a space shooter that's coming out. System Shock. It's in there. It's in the demo. Nobody even mm. realizes it. It's there. Yeah. It's I starting that was to a just... DX11 game. It's in there. Oh, <laughs> well, well, there we go, guys. I, I might have to take a look at that. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's DX11, and uh, that'd be interesting. So yeah. take a look at that if you get a chance. It's free on good old games. So if anybody's mm -hmm. got a card that supports it, download it, try it out. It's pretty... It, and it, that's one of those games where it, it works so well because you don't you don't notice any anomalies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah so. this is the reality. Every card from uh, every game, 
that's that that has that's worth its salt is going to have upsell up up sampling tech in it from now on right and the 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 as you said the problem is we can get to a scenario where a 30 uh uh a 3060 could beat a 6800 XT 6900 XT I bet you could beat a 6900 XT under certain circumstances with TLS could do could do that's that's where you get like that's where you get like what what's the at any point like I got to a point today where I did my video and I don't care how unpopular it is but I was like (laughs) I literally cannot recommend an AMD product until at least they prove that this thing is coming right so if they prove that it's coming, well then we can talk about it. But right now, it's it's you know it's it's whispers and fairy dust to me. Right? It doesn't exist, right? Well, here, here's the even worse part about this whole thing for AMD. I mean, it's fine for us as people that have RTX cards, but DLSS has gone unchallenged for two and a half ish years now. Mm-hmm. It sucked for about a year, so it's been good for about a year and a half. Um, no NVIDIA proprietary thing ever mattered long term, no. but that's because there was always something to challenge it relatively quick. This thing goes another year unchallenged. AMD is going to be kicked out of that box. They're yeah. just going to be pushed to the side. All developers are going to put it into their next gen uh, game engines. And once they're in the game engine, which they're going to use throughout this entire console generation, Guess what? It's going to be in every single title. And why would they want to add in some new thing that's going to be buggy and maybe work, maybe not? It's going to be bad. They'll they'll probably shoehorn it in because of the consoles. And that's really where AMD's uh, saving grace right there. But they might not. They might just say, screw it. No, you'll have dynamic resolution. PC gamers can use the AI upscale list. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm... I'm going. I'm going to defend the, the the red team here for just a second. In, in this, go for it. Blasphemy. Well, no, no <laughs> honestly, it's really it's on. Um, it's it's Sapphire that I'm going to say. Like because I, I did a I did some testing on it that Sapphire tricks their boost software or mm-hmm. their boost uh toggle in their so, their trick software. It's actually really cool. But I mean, it, it's not a com- competitor to DLSS, but it, it can help in a lot of situations. And I don't. <sighs> I don't understand why something like that isn't already in like they've got so much stuff in Radeon settings. Why is it something and, it, and it's different than Radeon boost? You know, Radeon boost is in eight games to where it, you know, drops your resolution when you wiggle your mouse so that you mm-hmm. think you get higher frame rates, which, um, by the way, only works on LCDs because on OLED, you can see each individual frame clearly. Gotcha. Really? Yeah, and that's yeah. good oh. to know. Yeah, on on uh, you got the OLED plug in, boys. You got it. I know it's there, there's there's more OLED coming. <laughs> I got I got more stuff, and it ties in with DLSS. Maybe I'll bring that up here in a minute. But but uh, yeah, no LCDs because you get that natural blur. Um, it, it's almost like in home game streaming. Like I used to do that on my LCD TV, and it looked fine, it looked like <laughs> native. Mm-hmm. Once I got an OLED, it looked like a smeary mess. So anytime. Anything lowers quality during motion on an OLED, which is a great display, you will immediately notice it. Oh, goodness. Well, yeah. like the Radeon Boost uh, or the, the, the Sapphire Boost, Sapphire Trix Boost, you just run it at like 85%. I mean, even get guys like uh, Hardware and Box Show, if you run like an 85% resolution with Radeon image sharpening, it cleans it up a lot and it does give you a lot of performance back, but it is nothing like what DLSS does. Mm-hmm. you know it's nothing like that but it's a it's a help i don't know why they haven't implemented something simple like that it just changes the internal resolution the render resolution and boosts it a little yeah it's 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 kind of interesting but at the same time like it's not dlss it's not no, it's it's not yeah and that's that's more like what the consoles do mm-hmm. you know change resolution when needed type of thing yeah give yeah, us I'm, something i'm nearly of the right, opinion I, it's something the, yeah, when AMD do it, that's what it will be. <laughs> like it will be something like that. It'll be something. You think so? Yeah. I think it's gonna be a combination of like four different things. Like mm. I've got this in my head where it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a fifty percent resolution modifier internal using uh, uh, integer scaling so that it scales properly, and then it's gonna use some small form of something to interpolate between pixels to fill in the gaps. Mm. I could be very I- wrong. That sounds just, complicated for AMD. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've well, got integer scaling and they made it work across almost everything now. 
Yeah, Even right. Vega, it took forever to put it on Vega, but it's there now. Yeah, yeah, but it, it, it also takes them a long time to get drivers that actually work. So, and we had we had Cortex on uh, last, last week, week, and he was talking. Yes. About, he was talking about the fact that in a Valhalla is a Valhalla Assassin's Creed Valhalla. He could just make a crash. Like he he literally didn't know that he could. He, he he was like, I cannot play that game. I really enjoy it. Can't play it. Have to put an Nvidia card in to play the game. Yeah, to get past really? a certain like quest or something, he had to pop in a Nvidia card. But yeah. their performance is so high in that game, and it's on all of their charts, and that they mark it. <laughs> yeah, but apparently you can't play it with that though. Oh, well, you can't play it start to finish. You can play it. You can run the demo. You can run the benchmark. You can do that. Um, <laughs> but well, let's let's take OLED and DLSS and combine them into one thing. This is more tangible to people that are like, "Oh, I don't care about DLSS, and I don't care about OLED." Well, there's now rumors from Bloomberg and I think Reset Era about the new upcoming uh, Nintendo Switch Pro. And apparently they're going to be using OLED, which is awesome. And they're going to be using DLSS to up games from probably 720 to 1080p all the way up to 4K. So this is, and if this works, this is probably also going to be the best implementation of DLSS because it's curtailed for just this specific piece of hardware. But imagine literally like a little tablet thing competing with next gen consoles because it has dlss that's mm. what we're talking about in terms of gpu performance that nvidia will need to compete with what amd will need wow that's pretty impressive yeah yeah it it, it would it would also like the, the problem with dlss right now is is well sorry let me just reset the thing with amd is when they do it they have the consoles to help adoption right so right. when, when AMD do it, they're gonna. They said they're gonna do it across consoles and their own GPUs and all that kind of. That's what they said, right? They use some sort of lots of bullshittery, so nobody knows exactly <laughs> what they meant. But um, <laughs> you know, marketing. <laughs> uh, but like they, they claim that it's gonna go across all. Of so if it does, well, then that means that that's gonna aid their impl- their their adoption rapidly. So that's Nvidia's Nvidia's kind of Achilles heel with DLSS. It's not on consoles, but if it's in and Nintendo, That's man, console. Those, have you yeah. have you seen the sales numbers of the consoles that are out? <sighs> no, I haven't. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, oh yeah, geez, yeah, like millions eating lunch, everybody's lunch. Switches, really, still? Yeah, they're still yeah. out of stock here in the states. I, like they're they're ridiculously hard to find. Pretty much since launch, I think there was like a five minute period. People were like, "Oh, there's no game this week." A and Switch. Then, yeah, Nintendo Switch is going to destroy Microsoft and and, and Sony. Like, I, can, I bet you the Switch will sell more than like PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Xbox Series. All of those combined, I bet you the Switch will outsell. I can drive into town right now and pick up a Switch on a discount. On a discount. Lucky? Well, well you ship them across <laughs> the ocean... Don't pay those import taxes. Find a way around that. Put it in a luggage. It's a Say gift. it's a baby. <laughs> and and uh, there you go. You can get a free vacation out of this deal. <laughs> really? Is it that like are they yeah. expensive and shit? Yeah. Like, <laughs> and Nintendo's so smart. They make the slightly smaller one. It's like, this is your portable Switch. This is your at-home Switch. So like, yeah, like people that buy Switch, uh, Switches here, they buy, have like two or three or four of these fucking things. It's crazy. <laughs> I had one. I thought it was really cool, and then I realized I didn't play it, so I just sold it. It's <laughs> fair. It's yeah, yeah. yeah like, my daughter has one. I use an emulate. I, I mean, um, I. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> shh, shh, shh. You own the games. You own the games. At least you own I the do. games. I, I, I do. I do. I just. I yeah. my neck and the. I don't. I don't like the controller. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, if if we get back to the original point, uh, though, like if. If they can make that work, if Nintendo can make a handhold console with a 720p internal screen somehow output when docked to, even if it's some dynamic 4K nonsense with DLSS, that's literally going to mainstream that technology instantly. Mm. And AMD's technology isn't even starting as far as we know. Like, there's probably still a guy at a chalkboard going, all right, we want to take one pixel, we want to make it nine pixels. Thoughts. (laughs) Thoughts. <laughs> Stretch. Hold yeah. shift and pull. <laughs> is there is there any anything to be said for having another mass there? Anybody want to go to mass and pray for solution to this problem? <laughs> right. I, I want it so bad. I want 
I want Fidelity FX Super Resolution so bad. Right. Like, mm. I wanted it more than new cards. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. it makes old cards better if uh, if it'll work on them. I want it because I want to be able to say, here's what your options are. And I cannot say that to, to, to my audience, knowing that there's... The, the, like, I was... When this when they first said that this thing was going to be in the six thousand series, I was like, I was like, did they just say that because they knew they wouldn't get any sales if they didn't say it? So well, they didn't like, even say it. You remember the announcement? Because this was my biggest letdown on the six thousand series. Like it was on the slide, but they didn't even mention it. Well, he said coming soon. He did say it will be coming soon. He said, yeah, but nobody gonna... knew what it was. It's just like super resolution coming soon. Yeah, great. It took like three days for us to figure out that that's what they meant. Yeah. <laughs> and, and... Like so, they they have. If they had come out yesterday, I don't even care if it's not ready because I don't want them to rush something out. I don't want them to get something that's going to be broken when it comes out, right? Right. But if they come out and went, look, we guarantee you this will be out. It'll be out by Q three even, right? I'd be like, cool. At least they're saying it's going to come. We've got kind of a rough idea of when it's going to come. And now I can go right. Well, you can buy a sixty seven hundred XT and not worry that it's going to get beaten the. Beaten to a bloody pulp by the 30, the the thirty sixty because it has it and your car doesn't. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I think that's about all we can say there. Um, AMD needs this immediately, otherwise they're they're going to be left behind. Like I said, the longer that they wait and the longer that this takes, mm -hmm. more games, more game engines, DLSS is in, and eventually it'll just be impossible to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 yep. Um, so I did want to ask, uh, Keith, because I've never really got your opinion on this, Keith. Uh oh, uh oh, uh, I'm getting in the <laughs> corner. <laughs> uh, uh, how are you how are you feeling about the Rocket Lake stuff that that we're hearing? Like, what what what's your what's your feelings on the Intel and and their their back port of of is it is it Ice Lake to? Oh, 14, no, and, uh, to yeah, 14? Ice, Ice Lake, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I I am not, and it's funny because a lot of people I get you know of course. This guy could this guy's shilling for Intel. I'm like, I don't care about CPUs. Like so I care so little about CPUs <laughs> when right. it comes to it. Uh I'm a GPU guy. I love graphics technology. But as far as CPUs, that is such a weird one. Like just all of Rocket Lake and the moves that they've made with it and the core count and the limit and the the the, the strange structure and the bending. I think it was a mistake with an I9 branding on there. Right. And, uh how many skew eight core skews do you need? Uh, gonna, yeah, because there's like four nines and then like four sevens four more or sevens, and they're all eight cores, and <laughs> literally their clock speeds and bends that are differentiating them. Um, I think they're like they're efficient parts, like so, like the T parts. I think they're going to be surprisingly good uh, based on the numbers that we've seen as far as like the, the leaks that we got over there, like Usman got a copy of like the actual deck from their, <laughs> from the press, the, 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 the review stuff. And, uh, I, I think it's, I don't know. I'm not really that impressed. I'm just going to be honest. Uh, instead of beating around the bush and being like, well, you know, it's like, <laughs> I'm just not that impressed. Yeah. Well, that's I, that I, is honestly, I'm more impressed by the eight core in this laptop than I think I will be that. This has got a Ryzen 7 4800HS. Oh, right. Nice. Nice. So I think I'm more impressed by that than I am what... Ro and now, Rocket Lake could come out and blow me away, but it's not mm -hmm. going to get me off of my 5900X. Yeah. <laughs> right. I was going to say, there's no way it could beat your 5900X. It's literally impossible outside of single core. It's, yeah, it's gonna be. It's gonna. Oh, it's gonna beat your fifty nine hundred X. That's what Intel was showing in their slides, wasn't it? That's what they were comparing it to. Oh, you talking about if they did like the speed burst with PCIe Gen four storage? No, they were. They were. They were like they compared it in gaming uh, at one of their events, didn't they? Right. To, uh, well, well, to, that's because you don't need a twelve core for gaming. Yeah. I mean, so in gaming, it's it's faster than fifty nine hundred X. That's AMD's fault for that comparison. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, because what was it? The world's fastest gaming CPU once they had that, and then then they yeah. showed the fifty nine fifty X at the end. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I get where they're. I, there. I think their argument with there is 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 we all know 
that if you put a 58, you can look at the charts everywhere. 5,800X and a 5,900X are within like, they're, they're just nudging each other on a, a, across the board when it comes to gaming performance. Mm-hmm. You, don't, you don't buy the 5,900X for gaming. You do it for mixed workloads. Mm-hmm. So, and uh, the 5,800X is what you buy when you just want a straight game. Right. But that's what I that's have. Really right here. Yeah, 5,800X, great chip. Um, I probably would have ended up with that if I could have actually bought one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes beggars can't be choosers on those. Yeah, um, the, the 5900X is provided by AMD. It's on my test bench. I don't actually use it. I'm still using my 3900X happily. Yeah, yeah. I have a of a 10850K as well. That was like these ah. things. These things are the ones to talk about if you want to talk about Intel parks. Don't get excited oh, yeah. about Rocket Lake. Uh, this thing I, is like. It's 400, 400 bucks. Yeah, 400 bucks. 400 I saw bucks. it on the shelf at Best Buy and was like, hey. Right. <laughs> yeah. 400 yeah. bucks. The, the 10700s are going for like $250. That's eight core, 16 threads, $250. It's competing with, it's cheaper than AMD's six core at this point. Yeah. That is insane. And available. And mm. available. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's an interesting part about Rocket Lake is, is, they're going to new motherboards, you know, PCIe Gen 4, all those things. Are, do you think they're going to go crazy with the pricing just because they'll have them? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. These yeah. things are going to be 500 bucks plus, man. Why? Yeah. Because I-9. 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 <laughs> like, I get, yeah, that, that's why the branding is there. But, like, why would you pay that for it? <laughs> Believe it or not, I think this is going to be AMD's checkmate on Intel, like for good. Like they're just going to drop kick them straight out of desktop after this, <clears throat> because once Zen Gosh. four comes, I mean, we already know it's going to be twelve core CCX. That's how they're going to get fifty percent more cores. So basically, AMD's nope. going to have their cut nope. down. No, nope. I'm going to stop you there. No, nope. we've had leaks of of Genoa. Um, it's uh, it's going to be um, eight core CCDs again. Um. Definitely, uh, eight core CCDs, no 12 cores, um, on five nanometer, which Ooh. is really weird. Yeah, it's really weird. That, well, then now they're just going for straight profit, is what yeah. it is. They're making yeah. their money, they were, yeah. they, they're, they're sick of being at the bottom. Yeah, it, it, it is that is the pre- that was the same. I did a video last week, Chris should have watched it. I can't <laughs> watch them all. <laughs> <laughs> um, talking about like this is this this is bad for gamers. Uh, great for AMD, great for data center. They're going to 96 cores, but they're doing it with 12 CCDs rather than eight CCDs. So, um, so that's that's the whole thing. There's not like they, they could have done it with eight and put 12 cores. Uh, they're adding AVX 512, I think, to it as well. That's mm-hmm. that's flown around as well. And B um, Float 16. Yeah, B Float 16. I was talking to uh, Executable Fix, the guy who leaked that, um, and he was like, yeah, <laughs> definitely. I was like, man, are you sure? He's like, yeah, definitely, man. I'm telling you, definitely. So, yeah, yeah it's it's uh, it's it's eight cores. So, and, and like, you know, the, the argument I get is like, well, they could just add four CCXs, couldn't they? Uh, CCDs. I'm like, no, they're not going to do that. They're not going <laughs> to no. give you more silicon for the same prices. If they do, it's more expensive. That's no, no. It would only make sense if they got the, you know, obviously the smaller density of five nanometer and decided to put it towards higher core counts. Yeah. No, they're choosing to go for profit. Normally, I'd be like, that doesn't make sense for AMD. But AMD pretty much Zen 3 and uh, 6 thousand series amd the the new amd yeah this makes a lot more sense um yeah which kind of ties back to what i was saying before this is the reason why i'm not happy with the 6700 xt is amd they're trying to punch way above their weight in cpu they can do whatever the hell they want intel is lost in the woods they are they're almost a generation and a half behind those guys they may never see the light of day again that's how bad Mm. they are but on gpu you're talking about like the little guy was it 20 percent market share um but look what they're doing they're like nah we're charging nvidia money why because we want to my favorite is is all all the people that are trying to defend this it's like they're just trying to maximize profit nobody bought their stuff before nobody recommended their stuff i'm like the five people that did recommend their stuff before they're not going to recommend their crap at all anymore because they're they're outpricing themselves 
So yeah. yeah, going with eight cores instead of twelve when they easily could. Yeah, I see. Look at look at me. I'm the most. I was the most pro AMD guy going around the internet. Like most pro AMD GPUs. I was like, look at this is Vega. Choo choo right? train. Didn't get didn't get didn't get a fair show. I'm gonna show you what Vega can do. Took a Vega, undervolted it, made it run 1700 megahertz. I was like, look. If you if you want to play with a card, right? No, not saying it's faster than a 1080. I'm saying if you want to play with it, you can make it go faster than a 1080. And this is how you do it, right? I I you know Radeon Seven, terrible product, terrible price. But here's how to get the best out of Radeon Seven. I bought that card, showed people how to do it. 5700 XT, terrible blower design cooler. But here's how you get the best out of that graphics card. You take that shitty thermal pad off. You put some washers behind it. And you put real thermal paste on it. It's not loud anymore. Phase change thermal interface. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I did that for all of AMD stuff. I, I went, I, I was like, I, I praised the 1600. I praised the, the 1700. I praised the, the, the 3600 and the 3700 and the 30, you know, I praised all of AMD stuff and said it was so good and well done. Bravo, bravo, bravo. And I'm just yeah. fucked off with them now. I'm absolutely fucked off with them. I'm so annoyed with them. It's ridiculous. Like they, they, it's like milking their twenty percent. That's what they're doing right now on the GPU side, and mm. and on the CPU side, they're like, do you know what? Intel had it great, didn't they? Didn't they make they made that's, they make that's, that's what yeah, they're they, doing. Yeah, this is gonna they, be their Skylake. Yeah, they make seventy billion a year. I want to make seventy billion a year, right? You know, Paul, it's funny <laughs> you talk about the 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 tweaking and how you guys made all that stuff. Y'all made my life a living hell for a while. I just want you to know that. Because <laughs> I would do when I would do comparisons, they'd be like, "Yeah, you didn't undervote Vega." You said, "I'm like, I look, I tested how it comes out the box. Talk to AMD. They're the ones that pumped it full of voltage. I know you can undervolt it and it goes faster and right. runs slower or runs faster. Look, I've done guides on how to do it. Why don't you do it for all the performance reviews? I'm like, because it's not how the car not yeah. ninety nine percent of the people aren't going to do that <laughs> right right and see that that's basically what the amd fan base became because there was no real reason to buy amd uh yeah. i mean you had polaris and then name one gpu out, uh launch that went well for them post polaris um mm. even polaris no... was fucked up man polaris drew more power from the pci express oh yeah boat. that's right it burned the board so they didn't even yeah. fuck that one up <laughs> <laughs> so yeah basically they never have a proper launch of any of their stuff so yeah basically the community around amd became the tweaker that's where the tweaker yeah. went that's where the... so comparing a non-tweaked product versus somebody who bought an nvidia card who never tweaked basically you needed to do tweaked amd versus non-tweaked nvidia and in reality, you're not too far off the mark mm -hmm. um, by how those things were probably going to get bought. But realistically, as a reviewer, you, you really can't do that because that's horribly unfair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be like me turning DLSS on and all the games that have it and just being like, that's just how it runs. <laughs> I, speaking of which, which but you can you make that argument that that's fair. Can, yeah. Can, I want, I, while I got you guys here and I've got a captive audience I've wanted to do something dumb like that call, and call it a life's not fair comparison. <laughs> I'd be, <laughs> yeah, I'd I'd like, I'm down like, with that. Yeah, I, I'd like, check like, that out. Post 6700 XT launch, when I've got one in my hands, I take the 3060, and they're 12 gigs, 192-bit bus, reasonable you know, core, CUDA cores and stream processor count, ROPs, flops, all the jazz. What happens if you turn you just run at 1440p and you turn one with the LSS on? What does it look like? I'd do the yeah. real life's not fair and do it against a 3070 and be like, AMD, you're the ones pricing it here. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> do it against it's, it's their own fault yeah. for doing yeah. that. And then go and then go. And do you know what else, boys? Do you know what else, boy? Here's the 6900 XT, <laughs> and here is oh. it versus the 3070. <laughs> Well, like I said, I did that <laughs> performance comparison. I tried to make it as fair as possible, but everybody got mad. Like, yeah, that's great and all, but that's like t disabling the turbo on a car that has it. And I was like, this it's getting so hard to do these comparisons because of all these features and technologies. Mm -hmm. right, what is yeah. fair anymore? What is fair? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I mean, I guess you'd say if you like DLSS, read. <laughs> you know, if you hate DLSS, skip. <laughs> you know. Resizable bar, smart yeah. access memory. Right. When do you turn it on? When do you turn it off? I'm hit the <laughs> point where... Turn it all on. Well, the, the support is there. At this point, it's on. 
You know, if it, it, Nvidia's rolled it out to the 3060, it works on my test bench. AMD from, from here forth will have smart access memory enabled on all the tests. It's just it's part of it at this point. Right. Yeah. Um, and it, it's on the 37 the the 3, 3000 series CPUs as well now. Yes. So, yeah. so they're rolling it out. The support is expanding. I think it's important. It's an important technology. It's great. I think it's it's weird because it's been dormant. It's this thing that's been around. Right. Kudos to AMD for using it. Um but it's weird. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's, it's probably something that they figured out, you know, designing the new consoles. And they're like, well, crap, this just <laughs> works. Yeah. Why Why don't we just do the thing? So, yeah. What's weird is, though, I want to ask you guys a question. Can you name many AMD exclusive features that weren't really somebody else's and they just named it something that they did themselves? Like, like how many how many of these, you know, like resizable bar, smart access memory. Ooh, that sounds amazing. That sounds interesting. And then it comes out, actually, it was an AMD's idea. Uh, you know, uh, FreeSync. FreeSync, they they really talked about, like, the up FreeSync, but it wasn't their technology. Does it count if they bought the company that made it? <laughs> no. no it doesn't oh. count. <laughs> so chill doesn't count? Uh, it did. That's where they got chill from, was that they bought the company that yeah. made it. Yeah, th- that's what I was going to use was chill, but I didn't realize they bought somebody for it. <laughs> so, like, uh, when is the last time AMD have come up with a clever software feature? Like... Dress effects? Mm, yeah, it was... It's a but, I mean, it's like, how, how, how many there. games use it? Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, but what I mean is, is that it was just their version of hair works, really, wasn't it? It was like... Well, was the, yeah, it you're was you're saying something they have that nobody something else has. That they thought of and brought like that revolutionized like the way like that we still use it there's nothing there's not like infinity cash infinity cash yeah yeah but okay. that's a that, hardware that, that's, a, that's it's a real thing though that that's yeah. the most impressive thing about uh radeon gpus it, it's in, it is impressive i don't know that they can get that kind of performance out of that narrow of a bus right whereas nvidia needed to make their own memory <laughs> to, to push <laughs> enough data through on their high-end cards amd is like eh more cash. Yeah. We're good. Yeah, yeah. But what I mean is that that's a hardware feature. I'm talking about software. Exclusively. Oh, software. Yeah. Mm. That they didn't it, like copy from somebody else. It's like, ah, somebody else made this thing. We got to have it. Even I a can't... lot of Radeon settings is a copy. Uh, yeah, there's yeah. not much stuff, right? There's just not much stuff because they don't have the software engineers. This is the problem. They don't have the software engineers to compete with NVIDIA. Um, and, you know, until they get that sorted, they're never going to be able to compete with NVIDIA. Well, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, and AMD cannot charge NVIDIA money because they're yeah. not NVIDIA. They don't offer the same product. It doesn't do the same thing. Even if they have literally down to the 0.1%, the exact same frame rate, the NVIDIA GPU is simply more valuable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. End of story. There's yeah. nothing AMD can do about that besides either get software parity or the smarter move, instead of investing all of that money on software, besides the DLSS competitor, which they just have to have. But all the rest of the stuff they can ignore if they just lower their prices. And mm-hmm. significantly so. Basically like an entire tier below NVIDIA. The entire time. NVIDIA charges 500, you charge 400. NVIDIA charges 400, you charge 300. Same exact yeah. performance. And yeah. then AMD doesn't have to worry about that stuff because they're cheaper. Yeah. yeah. Here's, here's, yeah. here's Sorry, sorry, uh, just cut across, Keith. But here's the here's the conundrum, right? The conundrum is they're all on seven nanometer, so they ha- so Scott has to go over to or or David Wang or whoever it is has to go over to Lisa Sue and go, hey, please, Lisa, can we have some wafer supply? And she's like, and she's like, uh, h- how much money are you going to be making on that that part? And he's to go, oh, we're going to be making, uh, you know, five hundred bucks. Uh, and she's like, could you sell it for six hundred and fifty? And he's like, yeah, okay, well, I'll give you this much wafer supply. If you can't, well, then I'll give you this much wafer supply. Um, well, un- unfortunately, that's only going to work now. I mean, yeah. th- this will not work under normal conditions. Like these uh, these cards, the 6700XC, would not sell. They would not no. sell at all. You know what would sell? Literally every single 3060 Ti. Because everybody would be like, uh, 20% less money for like 5% slower? Psh, duh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And here's, here's my exclusive, boys. Here's my exclusive. Uh-oh. I, don't you, I don't know whether you've heard this, Keith. But um, or did I tell you? I can't remember. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, six fifty 
is looking like the most expensive AIB version. Oh, and sure. It's going, average, it's going to be averaging around the 580 mark. Oh, yeah. Ooh. $600. The second I saw 480, I was like, this is a $600 AIB card. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Hmm. AMD are going to make these for like three months, and then they're going to stop selling them at AMD.com, and then that's the price. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, could you can, can how can you justify a six hundred dollar card? How there is no justification for it, none, with the performance that it has and the features. That makes now, me sad. <clears throat> yeah, the excuses I got in my my comment section was, well, the market they could sell at whatever price. Why didn't they just make it twenty grand? Yeah. I mean, wh- whatever you know. Why didn't they just make it more expensive? You're supposed to put a real world MSRP on the thing, and then the inflation will start thereafter. Problem is, it's already overinflated at their MSRP, and then of course it's going to be like three times that price or whatever. I mean, yeah, that's going to happen, but eventually the mining bubble will burst, and mm-hmm. then these things have to be sold to actual people. And... Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, on that, on that. Here's one for you. Did you hear that? Like some region in China has banned mining. Did, you, did anybody hear that one? No. Yes. Yeah, I heard of that one. Yeah. There's there's a play. There's a region in China. That, that's like, you know, we're, we're using too much energy here, boys. Mining, uh, banned. You're not allowed to ban mine anymore. Yeah, they probably yeah, just that... didn't pay the shakedown tax. Well, what's going to happen with those guys, and you you guys know this, if it's a big enough operation, and let's say they're making two, three million a year minimum, they're making more than that. They're just going to move to a different part of the world. Literally well, just pack it up, put it in crates, and we're going to move to, and I'm telling you, I ran, a lot of people are moving there. Mm-hmm. that are mining because it's yeah. so cheap yeah that's, that's I, I keep up with the mining market a lot you know mm-hmm. i people used to get mad at me they i got so much hate in september I'm telling you early september i published an article that ethereum miners were gearing up and they were about to buy everything you're right and they pe- were and people got so mad and told me it was my fault they were going to do it because i gave them the idea and i was like i am warning you <laughs> It's your fault. You did it. They didn't know. They were morons. They were just buying GPUs by the freaking pallet load for no reason. They were I, was like, I, I was like, these Ethereum miners already know. I'm telling you what they're doing. <laughs> we're not friends anymore, Keith. You started the mining boom. Official. <laughs> All right. That, that's it. Ha- ha- hashtag mining, m- mining cause. Yeah. 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 Keith, yeah, Keith calls step. mining. <laughs> yeah, no, you got you got no, you you got to go after your job. You got to try and cancel you. You got to go Keith from WCCF. Oh, don't 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 even joke <laughs> about that. In the, today's Man. world, don't even joke about that. Anybody yeah, tries like, canceling anybody, it's been attempted numerous times, but on me, so <laughs> I'm still oh, waiting wow. to get exposed. So <laughs> <laughs> when you're exposed now, you Expo- exposed now. <laughs> it, it's done. Well, what's even crazier is uh, I was watching um, Greg Salazar, the, yeah. the, the mm-hmm. science studio dude. Apparently put up like a video the other day. Somebody posted in my Discord. Apparently the normies out there, like your J's Two Cents viewers, your Linus viewers, they didn't even know about the mining boom up until like a week ago. What? Like they just what? didn't have a clue. They that, did not a... know this was happening. Look, a coworker at work who doesn't know the first thing about computers called me today. Now, if this guy knows, he goes, hey, how do I get set up on some of this mining? And I said, you don't click. <laughs> <laughs> no, i didn't hang up on i was like you, you don't it's too late if you want to get in on this you're you you're missed the late. boat the yeah. boat's out in the middle of the ocean having a party and you're yeah. left on the beach yeah, you'll yeah. never make your money back anyway if this guy knows about it and the general normie audience hadn't figured it out i don't know what to tell him and then part of me tells you it's the their the their sources the should content have given yeah. yeah they should have given a little bit of a context other than just saying these companies aren't making enough cards. Grr, I'm angry. It's like, mm-hmm. this is what's going on, and this is why there's not enough cards, and and it sucks. Yeah, yeah I, think- I think this ties into a, a bigger thing. I, I kind of want to tie this into like an actual segment. I, I thought about this earlier, but just the, the amount of low IQ tech content out there being produced. Um, like, I, I did a video smashing a lot of the 3060 reviews because they were trash. They were they're just trash. And... But this is what people watch. And this is this is kind of feeding into the whole cycle of this problem because people just don't know any better. Um, your guys' thoughts on, on all of that. Do, do you think it's like cause and effect or just am I thinking too hard into stuff? 
just just to get key cut cut up we went on a and i don't know whether you listen to it but we went to a tirade about the 3060 um 3060 is in, in my opinion a city card doesn't make any sense uh right it makes better sense than the 6700 xt right now let's be honest but, like, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense because uh it's 3060 only 3060 ti it's yeah 3060 ti it's only 10 percent faster than a 2060 is circa 10 percent faster um in, in nvidia it, you can tell that it, it it's a bad performer because nvidia wanted to compare it to a 20, 1060 and we were really kind of annoyed it was like like the likes of linus was like you know 1060 uh 1060 1060 1060 1060 1060 yeah, yeah no the, the thing is i i'm not comparing it in and, and nvidia may not like it but in the review i don't even have the 1060 in there because it's irrelevant um it is a super <laughs> no no like i'm looking at the hardware survey right now 9.2 percent of steam's market uses a 1060 maybe right. i need to go back and throw it in there just for those guys to have a reference point because it is roughly twice as fast as that card um, but as far as the previous generation, it's sitting right there around 2060 Super 5700 XT level, uh, right in between the two of those cards. It's it's an iterative performance upgrade for the, the dollar if the market was normal. Mm -hmm. um, if it was 299 I would be like, cool, let's go. Uh, 330 th This is the... Now, I will say, Jay's video, he's been reviewing this model. This is the RTX, the, the 3060 black from mm -hmm. the xe black now the xe black was specifically made to be an msrp card there's no backplate on it there's no overclock on it and it's only being sold through evga at the msrp and you got to get on the queue to get it all that kind of thing um is it MSRP? Keep... No. is it actually yes, tr yes it's 329 you, okay. three, you can go to their website get on the queue it's 329.99 it's like buying amd cards from amd.com yeah. It, it is. It is. So I am, as a reviewer, I am very thankful that this is the model that I got. Right. Mm -hmm. you, just because of that reason. Um, because at 400 plus, it's, it's no. Like this is the mod. Like if you want to <laughs> yeah. buy a 3060 because you like that performance and you're, you like the VRAM, that's where you need to look at. You, but everybody's screaming it from the rooftops. You want to spend $400 on a graphics card? Or 450 is with its umbilical cord. This the 3060 Ti is a way better card. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. substantially faster. I mean, I mean, if you really think about it, the 3060 Ti kills the 3070, the mm -hmm. not out 6700 XT. It already kills that. It's probably going to kill whatever card AMD comes out with the 6700, and it's killed the 3060. The, it's the 30 basically the 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 three to five hundred dollar card to buy is that. Yeah, yeah, it, it it really put a hamper on the rest of the market because you, you Nvidia couldn't make the 3060 so much faster than what the previous models were that it was competing with that card. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you mentioned it. I, I believe one of your videos, Paul. Nvidia is not going to make a card that is faster than the tier above it. Yeah, <laughs> you <Right>. can't <laughs> make it faster than the tier above it. They do a really good job about that. How many people bought a 5700 because you could flash it and overclock it, and the 5700 XT was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. What I, what I find really funny though is that this is this is the first um, the first 60 class card I think that we didn't get the full full die launch that launch. So like this is a cut down die, right? It's it's it has. It's supposed to, I think it is 3,500 and something CUDA cores. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to have yeah. three, I think the full die is 3,800 and something. Yeah, I think so it's they, like 3,880 so, or yeah. something. Yeah. So they definitely put it in, in like, they, they definitely hampered its performance somewhat to get it to where they wanted it. Like, this is where they wanted it to be. They could have made that it fast. That or they didn't feel like there was going to have any kind of, how, how long before we get a 6,600 XT, 6,500 XT, you know? Yeah. Are we going to yeah. get a, Three hundred dollar, hundred twenty eight bit card. Probably, mm, yeah. probably. I'm thinking two eighty. I'm thinking the two eighty range. I don't think it'll hit two ninety nine. But yeah, basically the replacement for. I, don't know, I just thought about that. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, no. I I figured the entry level card, bottom of the basement's two hundred bucks. There will not be any sub two hundred dollar graphics cards anymore. I know. Here's here's a top for you though. Here's the top for you, right? Sixty seven hundred. Is probably going to be four hundred. If they if they release a sixty seven hundred, it's probably going to be four hundred. So it dep depends how fast it is relative yeah, yeah. to Nvidia. 
So then they're, they're trying gonna... to get back to those numbers they wanted with the 5700 series. That's what they're mm-hmm. doing. Yeah. It was supposed yeah. to be 450 for the XT. Yeah. Right. Mhm. I what I really want to see though this is the one that kind of cuz like in my in my um on my live stream I was I was less angry <laughs> than kind of when I got away from it. And I, I got more angry as, as time went on. But uh, yeah, my live stream, people were like, this is a replacement for the 5700 XT, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, but is it though? Like, like I know it is. Yes, it is. Absolutely. But like right. the die size is probably a little bit bigger on this. So like, it's not a 250 millimeter squared die. It's probably more like 300. That's what I want to see. I want to see the die size. And I was like, I know it's going to cut down bus, but it's got all that cash. That's why the die is so much bigger. So it's like the goalposts have kind of changed here. I was like, and the performance is, 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 is really fast. Like it is really fast in terms of rasterization performance. It, it is a really fast card. Like it's probably getting near the, near the fucking 600 or 500 <laughs> millimeter squared, uh, 6,800, right? It's, it's probably closer to that than it is. So it's like, yeah, it's fast, but is it like for me? I was like, if it's three hundred and something millimeter squared, well then you're getting more silicon. At least that's the only kind of bright side I could think, right? At least they're not, you know, shortchanging you on the silicon, right? Yeah, yeah, but waivers are cheaper. I, realistically, yeah. die size shouldn't matter. I'll take a two millimeter squared GPU that's eighteen times faster than the thirty ninety, and mm. I'll spend a thousand dollars on it. I don't care how big it is. Each generation, you should expect a 20 to 30% performance uplift at the exact same money or adjusted for inflation if there's there's big, you know, year like last year. If everything was 10% more expensive, that would make sense. But we're going crazy here. If you're not getting 20 to 30% more performance, then it's not a replacement. It should actually be cheaper than what you got last year. Plain and simple. Full stop. Well, that's what I was saying. What I what I used as an example for the thirty sixty beating bad card was that um you know the last time Nvidia gave you this type of performance increase was the nine sixty, uh the nine sixty was ten percent faster than the seven sixty, but it went from two fifty to to two hundred. You know, so the MSRP for the nine sixty, the two gigabyte nine sixty was two hundred dollars, and the MSRP for the seven sixty two gigabyte was. Two hundred fifty dollars. So we got a, we yeah. got a, we got a, yeah, we got a price drop. And you know, then people were like, "Oh, well, you got a twenty dollar price drop this time." No, the the twenty sixty was selling for three hundred dollars, buddy. Yeah. Now yeah. it it debuted at three fifty. Yeah, yeah, but it was selling for three hundred. It was, selling it for was at, at the end of its life cycle. Yeah. But did you get double the VRAM? I mean, there there are some. Yeah, I, you you kind of do this. Yeah, if it was two ninety nine, <laughs> I wouldn't have to do this. If, exactly, you know, but yeah. it'd be fine. Yeah. At 299, I would have been like, cool. There's yeah. your three hundred dollar card. Right. Yeah. Right. It's there. far enough away from the 3060 Ti that it's like it that's a whole nother tier. That's a hundred extra dollars. Mm-hmm. But when it's like 70 bucks, it's like it's way faster. Yeah. It's yeah. this you you run into the the 3070 XT. I think the real thing that we're gonna look at in a couple of weeks is gonna be the 6700 XT against the 6800. Mm. Yeah. You're talking about a 20 watt difference card. Hundred bucks, four gigs of VRAM. It, it, the numbers they're showing, eh, I want to see how those two stack up. Where does it land on the RDNA two stack? Right. I want to see. Where, I want to see where the fifty seven hundred XT ends up. That's oh, what yeah. I want. <laughs> pa- oh, Paul's yeah. really all about that. <laughs> well, he's, yeah, for a good reason. I know it's fair. Like the fifty seven hundred XT is it can be faster than the twenty seventy super in more modern games. It's caught it's a up. Good card. Yeah. It's it's caught up with the the twenty seventy super. Well, let's put, let, let's put it this way. Let's say the six seven hundred XT is twenty five percent faster. That's kind of like what Celso was saying on the higher end, and that kind of seems to be about what it's looking like. That means if it was three ninety nine, that that's how much this card should be. But then you add a twenty percent price bump, you're basically getting five percent extra performance. Mm. Here's one. Terrible. <laughs> Here's one. Uh, just to ask a random question: Do you have any numbers on hand for the 5700 XT on the the um the numbers that the games that AMD showed? Because that would be okay. interesting. All right. So here, what games did they show? Because I've got fourteen. I've actually got results pulled up for fourteen. 14. See, the uh, problem is I test Borderlands three at high, 
uh instead of badass because it causes some problems across you know just it, it makes it easier for me to test across anyway uh yeah. at high settings it's got 65 fps average okay i'm gonna get to horizon it. zero dawn did they do horizon zero dawn on there no i'm gonna get it now so. i'm, I'm gonna... all right watch watch dog legions i know they put that one on there yeah that one's on there all right 67 fps at 1440p with 60. very high settings, not ultra, 60. so sixty. So I'm trying to get your you guys. You you guys have the you guys have the slide uh, the slide deck on your thing. So here we go. Got the slide deck. So um, it, which one was it? Uh, Watch Dogs Legion. You have sixty seven F- FPS. You for Watch Dogs Legion, you have sixty seven FPS of fourteen forty p. Max settings. Watch Dogs Legion on the 6700X, you get 62 on AMD. Side. Okay, see, I'm running it very high, so that's one notch down. But you, you can't figure that it's going to make that big of a it, difference. No, it's not. Yeah, that's interesting. Do you have Assassin's Creed at all? Uh, oh. No, I don't have Valhalla. I asked for a code. I don't, I don't like to spend money Black these Ops. days. I'm broke. <laughs> Black. Uh, Black Ops. No, a, a Cold War? Yeah, uh, well, Cold, Cold War, War doesn't have a built-in benchmark, it, so... It doesn't. Where I tested, the 5700 XT gets 70 FPS at it's maximum not, settings. Yeah, it's 97 here, so that's... Yeah. Dead. Yeah, it's it's a good... But 20. again, it depends on where you test it. Yeah. The 3070 I've got does 98 in the same scene. Dirt 5? Did you do Dirt 5? Uh, no. Well, what did the 3070 have on Cold Hold War? Hold on, I can... Wait, on what? No, I didn't do Dirt 5 because I was using it only for ray tracing test yeah gears five no that's the last one i think and uh, hitman three hitman three no i don't have hitman three or gear gears five i hate that benchmark but i used it for <laughs> I, I can tell you what a 3060 does with resizable bar enabled hey oh, wow. no, give uh, us that. it does 50, uh 66 fps <laughs> 66 fps in ultra game? setting gears five ultra settings at 1440p well yeah well, amd's cards way faster than that <laughs> <laughs> i figured it was <laughs> yeah, 88. um that sounds yeah. about right yeah well that's what we have to remember so 5700 xt doesn't have a sizable bar either so um yeah we, we, any of the numbers that we would have messed with here we wouldn't have known because it could give you up to 18 percent performance increase right it, it, it's yeah. more like it's more like five to ten but it can give you up to 18%. Yeah, very game dependent. I wonder what the dependency is. That's what I want to know. And I get they say, like, you know, it's the memory packets and stuff, but they've got to know what it is. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's weird. Some games tend to get slower, and then other games go f- significantly faster. So it's it's a weird reason. I don't, I don't know. I'm not, it's not a software. It's, it, it's, it's got to be the way that the game engine handles its memory having like that extra bandwidth or something might not be a benefit versus some that do. yeah i tell you what i'll send you the numbers tonight paul i'll run i got you got it i've got my 5700 xt i've got the 5900 x i got the same setup that they're testing with mm-hmm. i'll test yeah. it and i'll shoot you some numbers for a 5700 xt it'll be interesting here it'll be interesting to see what uh where it sits because that's that's that to me is like, is it worth? If I'm sitting there, because if if it's worth, if it's thirty percent faster than fifty seven hundred XT, that to me is yeah, grand. Because I can, I can buy this. Like, if I'm sitting there with a fifty seven hundred XT right now, right, and you can go on AMD.com and buy this thing. If you can go and buy this thing, buy it, right. If you have a fifty seven hundred yeah. XT, buy it. Actually, that's my my opinion. Because you go, see, I, I, I would argue the opposite because no, on, wait, it wait, wait, should, wait. should be three ninety nine <laughs> for thirty percent. No, wait, 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 wait. The reason why I'm telling you is you go buy that, right? And you sell your fifty seven hundred XT for eight hundred bucks. <laughs> wow, <Well>, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, the economics podcast, Chris. You got to tell people to save some money. <laughs> well, that's true. I thought we were talking under normal conditions like you could actually oh, go out and oh, buy right now things. like right now in the world that we live in well right? hell you could just buy that one and sell it for a thousand dollars i mean just keep your 5700 yeah, xt you, and sell you, that you want to get an upgrade and get your like you want to get your card for for free oh. like these people like to say free yeah you got to get something out of it yeah i don't know i i, I choose more money over gpu performance that's me any day of the no. week i take money over gpu performance buy you two you sell you one you, you walk away with no cost there well, like, okay. today I was looking at a, I seen a 6900 XT and I was like, hmm, hmm. It was, it was a thousand. I was like, I was like, 
it's a thousand, so I could buy two of them, right? I could sell, <laughs> I could sell my th- 3080 and I'd have two of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Three. Right. The wash. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? It's, it's like, I, I, for, for, well, it's not for free, for 500 bucks, because that's how much, 600 yeah. bucks, that's how much I paid for my 3080. But like, yeah, I'm like, two of them right and then i could go and sell the stick because i've seen it in stock so then i go sell my my uh 6900 xt for 1500 bucks or whatever it is on the used market as well right <laughs> so now i gotta <laughs> a steak dinner on top of it <laughs> yeah exactly you've turned, so... this, you've turned this into a free thousand dollar card and a thousand dollars in your back pocket yeah. right who needs right. to mine when you can flip yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, I was just going to say, so the point of this is if you could buy GPUs at MSRP, buy all of them and make <laughs> profit. <laughs> you, yeah. you don't have to buy 10 of them, just any one. If you walk through a store and it's sitting there, you just realize that you found gold. Pick it up. And- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, just make sure you got that credit card, five, ten thousand dollar limit on there. Just throw it on. You're not even paying for it yet. Exactly. And- you're You're using the bank's money. That's right. <laughs> I'm serious. I was like, I was like, I was looking at, I was like, I could literally get a 6900 XT for free right now. And free. what? Oh, n- no DLSS. Good job, AMD. He wouldn't even take it for free. <laughs> <laughs> no RTX voice, man. No RTX voice. It's the, the trade off. It's like, yeah, I gotta... isn't that good? Yeah, it's good. I'm using it right now. Yeah, my windows are open because it's beautiful outside and cars are driving by. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and nobody has a clue. People were like, people were like the other day in the Discord. They were like, um, "Will you, will you, will you turn off RTX voice? It keeps clipping your voice." Voice. I'm like, that's not what's happening. That's Discord. That Discord. If 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 somebody starts talking louder than you're talking, then it just mm-hmm. cuts silent and lets the other guy talk. Like, right. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, "Oh, right, right." Because I'm like, "Don't shit on the RTX voice. Don't 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 shit my precious RTX voice." <laughs> Look, when even A and B will tell you that's good stuff. It's yeah, good stuff. It, it's good stuff. Yeah, I thought when Scott said that on Twitter, like Scott, Scott, he went, he, he went, you know, that I got to hand it to you, Nvidia, RTX Voice, one of the best technologies, whatever, blah blah blah. I was like, so I you can do better. better. So you can do better. That's what I said. I tweeted, I tweeted back at him. Nope. <laughs> they got I really them. thought they were. That was one of those like moments. You know, I thought he was like, oh, they're about to announce something. Mm-hmm. I think AMD really is going to get on with the uh, the whole AI thing. We already kind of heard rumblings about that with RDNA 3. I, I think that they figured it out. They have to compete in this market to to be competitive. If NVIDIA is going to do it, they have to do it. It's just that simple. But it's still not stopping AMD from trying to charge NVIDIA prices without all those features. I'm sorry. I keep hammering that home because this doesn't ring true to AMD, apparently. Mm-hmm. Um, under normal market conditions, you would sell no GPUs this generation. It just no. wouldn't happen. No, I, 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 sixty eight hundred XT maybe. That would, one's not too bad. The rest, I would love to have ten thirty eighties, right? Ten thirty eighties, and just go out onto the internet and like find really dedicated AMD fans, like the the most hardcore AMD fans out there, right? And just go to them with their sixty with their sixty eight hundred XTs and their sixty, and go, you want to swap? You want to swap? <laughs> just see. <laughs> To swap, I guarantee you that number would be way higher than it was a few years ago, because those features are features. They're starting to turn people's heads. People are starting to, you know, maybe maybe you know the hardest core AMD. Like I was a hardcore AMD GPU nut, right? I was right, borderline fanboy, right? And my head's been completely not. I I hate Nvidia. I hate that company. <laughs> but, like I do. I hate them. Right? I hate I hate Jensen. I he's a he's an arsehole of a man but at the same time i i i do get that right now the value that in nvidia offer is there's nobody else that gives you the stuff like if you were somebody who uses cuda that was always their trump card right cuda was always their trump card and now they've got so many more trump cards yeah yep 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 all right guys yeah i was thinking uh Move on over to the question portion. Ooh, questions. These are always fun. All righty. So who wants to kick it off? Um, I could kick it off. Hold on. Let me find the questions. 
All right. Well, Keith, you want to kick it off while he's pulling that up? Oh, we have questions? <laughs> I don't see questions. Okay, no, I, I'll ask the question. So uh, it's um, it's uh, from uh, for you. It's for you, uh, Keith. Okay. Uh, are you an o- are you OLED gang? Sorry if you already <laughs> ended up covering it during the podcast. <laughs> so if you don't know, we've got a we've got a segment on the podcast where Chris always has to get OLED mentioned in every single podcast. It happens organically most of the time, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> So, so the question is: Are you a member of the OLED gang? Have you tried OLED? Do you like OLED? So I have right. tried it. I like it. I don't have it. All right. But I do want to. Can, can, can I get something completely? This this is going to go in. It goes with OLED because I hear this all the time. Burn in. Everybody's worried about burn in. And I've heard you. I've heard Chris go on about burn in and talk about uh, get over it because they've mitigated it so much it's not an issue, right? Yeah, you have to and actively the, try to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So I have in front of me. I used a 3440 by 1440p VA panel, 144 hertz Samsung screen, right? Mm-hmm. Love the screen. I'm um, just going to be honest here. I don't like VA. It's smeary. I prefer mm-hmm. IPS. The blacks are nice. The whites are nice. But it's not as smooth as IPS. Trade-offs. Enough. There is burn-in on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing something one day, and I saw the all of my icons down here on a loading screen. I was like, son of a... And I like called somebody. I was like, I got burning on my screen. I, I, I didn't think these did it. So when people say they don't want to go to OLED because of burning, I'm just here to tell you, VA panels, they burn in. Oh, <laughs> this one, there you go. So, and, and, and you know what? I'll get you guys a picture of it because it's visible. I don't even, you know, I'll get you a picture and send it to you. Don't worry. Where, Sorry, where, where, where are you from, Keith, by the way? Where, where about... It's- in the, in the <laughs> give us a state or something i live just outside of memphis tennessee yeah i got all of that right there in the talk <laughs> <laughs> it did come out <laughs> i saw you on a roll get, get a couple of beer in me and it's over with oh yeah there we go might as well throw a cowboy hat on me and some uh boots even though i don't wear either one <laughs> <laughs> might as well talk like you should right right it gets bad i can't help it so well so, maybe so. we should do that next time you stock go full southern i'll i'll bust out my new york and then paul you do your <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll go full dublin full irish yeah yeah, yeah what's well, the story boot the early <laughs> we won't even know what each other are talking about it'll just be just random gibberish the whole time you yeah. use colloquialisms from them like yeah i went over over yonder and got the thing from the, the- <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, have a, I have a feeling you guys won't have a clue what i'm saying though i can go we'll full just go like, uh sure <laughs> yeah irish guy go go grab some more whiskey that would basically be what we would yeah. have to say right about. that'd be a great it's, like april it, fool's video it's ishka ish, ishka baha i'll have you know that's what that's what whiskey called in irish ishka baha it means it means yeah. water water of life <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> oled oled is awesome though we need more we need it needs to be more accessible apparently nintendo thinks so so uh, yeah. i i would really say that when it comes to burn in um paul mentioned it before the ps vita the original ps vitas they had oled screens i mean the burn-in is not that big of a deal since it's been on handhelds all this time it's on samsung phones i have a ps vita launch model um had the battery replaced it's that old and have never had burn-in on it ever good 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 so yeah all right Um, I, i actually forgot about that when we were mentioning it and we were talking about phones i was like yeah, I have a PS Vita. I still use it. I have it modded so you can have all your emulators on it. Backups. <clears throat> <clears throat> your backups. <laughs> yeah, yeah, your backups. That's it. All yeah. right. So uh, this one's from Swift Talks. Te- uh, Swift's Tech Talk. I don't know why. In my head, I always got that reversed. Um, I've seen videos of people talking about GPU performance and uh, GPU to price to performance recently. Uh, I know for the future it's okay, but at this point in time, why even bother making price to performance uh, references? Uh, pretty much, basically, it's worthless at this point. So, what do you guys think? I mean, we, we've been doing it pretty much all video. Um, I'm just gonna throw my quick two cents on it. It, it. There's really nothing else that you can compare it to. That's that, that's my whole thought. Yeah. Um. What I will say is that these reviewers and and Keith is one of them. Uh, have to they do their one and done right? So like your review, your launch day review review is the review. And then maybe you might do a revisit later on or something like that. But like the review is the review. So you, 
you have to talk about it as it was launched and if everything was normal because everything will be normal at some point. So, you know, uh, there will be people in eight months' time who will go, you know, uh, 6700 XT benchmarks and then they'll get Kate's video. And he's like, oh, I wouldn't buy this because it's like 800 quid, blah, blah, blah. And then he goes on and he looks, it's like 480? You're like, wait. <laughs> That's probably the reason why I would say. What do you think? No, no, you're you're 100 right. Like I even had a little segment in my. I did the 6800 XT Nitro Plus review, and, and it's a great card. And, and at the very end, I did do a little snippet to like, hey, you know, right now I understand it's hard to find this card. Maybe I'll come back to this part and talk about the value of it once it's normalized. But for now, I can't speak to it. Um, but some people are, are, in my opinion, they get too caught up in the moment and they don't think about that six months, eight months down the road. Um, and, and, and who knows? I mean, we may wake up tomorrow and, and every government around the world said no more crypto mining and they shut every trade, you know, everything gets shut down and then everything normalizes. Uh, it's and it, what's what's interesting. And I want to bring this up now that while I've got a few seconds. This is also one of the reasons why in a lot of these reviews, you don't hear about the used market because it's so volatile. It's almost yeah. irrelevant to the specific review. You should, as a consumer, consider it. Um, but the reviews aren't going to be able to reference the used market because if we reference the used market right now in a review and six <laughs> months down the road, you were looking at the numbers going, "What's th this is not even... So see, right. yeah, it's a careful song and dance. And I, and to me, it gives you guys a great platform to add in and have commentary to add to it. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that, that, that that's actually a good way to look at it. There there's other avenues to get that sort of content uh, as the reviews have to be as neutral as possible um, in that regard. Plus uh, the other thing is, is like, let's use the 3060 at 329. And then the 6700 XT at 480. Yeah, they're both going to be inflated. But which one's going to be more expensive? I mean, relatively speaking, the 6700 XT is still going to sell for more because mm -hmm. it has a higher starting point. So relatively speaking, this should kind of scale-ish. Uh, I mean, I know NVIDIA cards are more in demand for miners. And then all the gamers want the AMD cards because the miners don't want them. But still. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's It's... It's like you cannot talk about value right now. You just can't. There's, there is no value to be had. If anybody buys a graphics card now, they're paying over what it costs. And that is, that is right. unless you buy from AMD.com um, or or Best Buy in the US, I think, for NVIDIA Founders Edition, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, cards. yeah or EVGA. Yeah. yeah. What's, like weird, what's weird is I don't know where I can buy my Founders Edition cards in, in Ireland. I don't know. Like, I used you to. Can. Buy <laughs> <laughs> no, you, 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 I just buy them from the UK. So because the UK has, has left uh, Europe now, I have to pay import tariffs and stuff like that. Oh, on it. Yeah. oh yeah. Well, so what you could do is smuggle over some switches. And I think somebody you know, at the docks, <laughs> they might be able to do a trade on that one. <laughs> In, when NVIDIA said no more, no more phone position on their website. What they did was they got a, they got a UK retailer for the UK to tell them. And that was, they're called scan.co.uk. So when you click on the link, on nvidia.com mm. directly to scan and you, there's so many founders edition cards available because i think they're still getting we cater for the rest of europe as well numbers oh but they're they only got 60 million people now like i, I genuinely <laughs> like i was looking at it at, at 3090 and it was sitting there for 1500 bucks for hours i kept checking back going when is this going to go out of stock and it was hours and hours and hours it was in stock in fact some of my subscribers after my video went live it wasn't talking about that it just i just referenced that in the video i remember that um, video yeah um the some of my subscribers actually came on and donated on my live stream like thank you paul for pointing that out because i was able to go on and um buy a a 3090 after your video went like hours after your video went live so uh yeah the the 3080 was in stock yesterday i think it was and i first time ever i clicked on a founder's edition link went straight to the website was there could have bought it obviously i'm not gonna buy it because i'll pay 23 percent tax on it and then whatever else and so it ended up being a thousand bucks but yeah you could you could get it which was weird wow Lucky. All right, so <laughs> now we're both like, wish we had that problem. Right, I can buy switches, <laughs> and I can buy 3080s. <laughs>
Yeah, jeez. They're just sending all you you all our stuff. That's the problem. We need That's more stuff it, over yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Well, you try living on an island where, like, I can't buy it. I literally can't buy it. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've got another one for uh for you don't get a name from the decoy. He literally just said question for WCCF. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, would would you have someone? Uh, would you have someone buy an? So oh, sorry. Would you get? Would you get a guy to buy a an AYA Neo, whatever that 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 handheld that or, uh, or a Nintendo Switch or Switch Lite? So, like, what would be your recommendations there? If, if, if I was going to get any of those, yeah, I'd probably get the Switch. And, yeah. and the reason the reason is, um, you have to be somebody who knows what you're getting into for the little the portable PCs, the little yeah. gaming PCs, because what you get is what you get, and you you hope you make it work going forward. But the the Switch, when you buy a game for the Switch, it's a game for the Switch. You're good to go. Mm-hmm. Um. It depends on what you want. If you want to get into emulators and you really want to be able to do kind of everything with it, then spend that money on the like the the Aya uh, Aya Neo. It's really cool, and you know it's got the 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 super low wattage Ryzen parts with the Vega GPUs in there, and it's super cool. But they're so niche, you've got to know what you're doing with it, kind of mm. thing. So. Yeah, I'm personally I, thinking about getting one. So, I mean, basically, the way that I look at it is if you have a huge PC catalog, buy that. It's worth yeah. five times the price of a Switch. Yes. Uh, just just because you're going to spend 50 to $60 per game on Switch. It depends on how many games you want to play on the thing, really. Yeah. yeah. I would play a lot of indie game style games on it. I wouldn't be trying to... Like, like the video that I did on it covering it was where... where um, uh, uh, I can't think of the guy's name where he ran it run, running uh, Crisis remastered on it, which is cool and all. But like yeah. that's the kind of game you play. Uh, I'm trying to think like games like like Utah and uh, side scrollers and those kind of things. Like you play a yeah. bunch of smaller games. The yeah, problem with me with that one is um, is that I love RTS, right? And um, good luck <laughs> well you, you need a mouse no matter what this is the problem right <laughs> so like you know i can't go back and play command and conquer on that thing it's not gonna happen so you know unless i'm playing uh i think i still play red alert sometimes if i'm going somewhere or i'm gonna be bored for a while i have playstation one red alert on my <laughs> PS Vita. um yes yeah, yeah. so you, you can use a controller for that but it's yeah it's terrible experience or like you, i play I think you'd be better off with a tablet like a full-on tablet and use the touch screen i think that would be <laughs> way to do that well uh, they, these have touch screen so yeah i just think it'd be a little too small i think it's like yeah, seven inch on, on the video yeah the, but like yeah, the that, 10 inch tablet would probably work but mm. as far as picking which one to get you've got to know what you want to do with it right you know that's yeah. where the the question really gets answered, and I know that's one of the that's what I call like a, a Linus answer, where like there here's no answer to this, but <laughs> let's dance around what it could be. It's, right. Yeah. If that's why I wanted to get one for testing, because uh, like for a lot of people, I bet you like you could literally just dock that thing, and that's all the PC the average person actually needs. Um, like I could edit videos on that. That's more than enough horsepower to do full on. 4k video editing which is ridiculous when you really think about it oh buy but, one i want to see that <laughs> yeah. yeah well i'm in the uh the indiegogo list thing they're like three days you could try to buy one i don't even know how much they are i have a price in mind that i'm not going over let's put it that way so you can knock hear- that and use it like a computer if that's the case don't buy the switch buy that yeah yeah I'm, well it's got USB-C. all you do is just jump on amazon get a USB C dock you get four yeah. hmi outputs you get 18 Done. usbs yeah, it's a full-on computer that you can play video you, games on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and here's think about docking it. Yeah, yeah, and here's when you can, if you can, when when you can get a GPU, you can get one of those GPU boxes and plug. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, <laughs> external GPU. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> RTX 3080 with my Nintendo Switch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. True story. Have you got any more questions, Chris? Or. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I could talk about the Neo forever because there's all sorts of cool stuff that you could do with that, and nobody's making videos on it, and I'm like. How do I buy one of these? Um, da, 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 da. Okay, so I got basically two questions that are basically the same. Uh, so one's from Big Gay Al and Blow Ye Wins. Um, well, first off, Big Gay Al says, keep up the good work over there at WCCF Tech. Oh, thank and, you. And uh, 
And it's good work on attempts to clean up your cancerous comment section on their. Oh articles. boy! <laughs> oh boy! Uh, there's a lit- literal dumpster fire for for years, uh, attracting the worst the internet had to offer. And what's Keith's opinion on the comment section? So, basically, <laughs> good job. You guys are doing doing good work there. And do you have anything to add? I guess. All right. So here's the thing. Somebody recently yelled at me on Twitter because they were linking stuff in the comment section. Uh, there was a time when I was heavy at writing on the site and I could keep up with the comment section for about 30 minutes mm-hmm. because often these, the, these articles, depending on how inflammatory the topic is, right? we were seeing upwards. I think one of our records is like 45,000 comments on an article. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. Um, a review will typically get 2000 plus comments in 24 hours. Um, that's almost impossible to moderate. So some people, I, I, this is why I tell people a lot of time, like hit me on Twitter. You, you'll catch me way faster over there than you will in the comment section, because there was a time I tried to keep up with it and we tried to, we, we've tried to find ways to moderate it without taking away people's voice because we want people to be able to go down there. And if they've got beef with the company, let it out. Right. We don't mind. We're not, we don't want to be one of these other sites where you have to go in and you have to put on your lab coat and you have to type in my name is, and this is what I th- No, Use your discuss ID, go to town, let everybody know what you think, but you don't have to put on, y- you know, a Nazi uniform and go crazy. <laughs> All right. So in between doctors and Nazis, somewhere in between there. Yeah. Uh, stay. Yeah. You, we do, you don't have to be super squeaky clean. So, I mean, we've gone to a, a, a pro, we've been working on, we've actually worked on it for over a year internally for like a filtering system so that people who were, have been around for a while and aren't like vehemently disgusting will be whitelisted so that they can just comment, but new people will be moderated and we have somebody now to, to take care of that. But uh, I, pro- I like the fact that we let people go hog wild but yeah. it is to our own detriment because honestly there's companies that won't work with us because they're like, man, I've seen down there in your comment section and we don't want that kind of stuff tied to our product. Cause you know, these companies, they go, Hey, here, you know, like, let's say, let's say this, you think EVGA wants to go, Hey, look at this review that this guy wrote about our stuff. And they go over there and there's furry porn in the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, I don't know. Maybe they'll like it. Why are you judging EVGA? Let them do what they want to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, like they're that that's our take on it. It's like, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We don't, it doesn't have to be family friendly, but we also have like, there's, there's gotta be a limit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's it not pa- Paul's old discord. Oh yeah. My good God. My good God. <laughs> well, Discords are private, you know, like, no, no, oh, no it was, was public. My, my was public. It I, oh. I <laughs> anybody join. And, um, yeah, it was, it was, I just deleted it. I just got fed up one night and was like, goodbye everyone. Um, <laughs> Those of you who uh, who I think are actually sound and want to contribute to a tech conversation, you're more than welcome. It just became a complete and utter dumpster fire of memes and just. So it turned into our, our comment section. It really yeah. was. Yeah. Oh, so was... My God, my God, man, you have no idea. And not only that, I, I think I would have let it go. I think I would have just left it because like I have nothing to do with what's what's been said in there. I, I like you can't you can't say you can't attach somebody to to what's been said in your comment section or in your discord. But but I would have let it go. But the problem was every day I was getting five or six people like I had a huge discord, like huge. And they were like, uh, such and such said something. And I'm really uh, upset about it. Uh, such and such said something. And can you do it? Can you ban them? Can you? Ban-? I was like, no. like, oh, we get con- That's one of the most common ban this person. Yeah. <laughs> ban that person i don't like that person and it's like children they disagree children. they disagree that that an intel cpu is better than an amd G- cpu so please ban them <laughs> right it's an opinion yeah. guys based yeah. on your little have some discourse <laughs> <laughs> i think more people just need to go out to the bar and talk to random people in real life. And uh, yeah. after you get clocked in the face enough, I mean, I'm assuming that they would by then. <laughs> they'll eventually figure out 
etiquette. Now, uh, now so we do have some legitimate like house trolls. Like that's just they're just in there to have fun, right? And, oh. and it's really and what they do is they just play around until somebody thinks they're serious, and then they all <laughs> jump on that person. And I'm like, oh god, you fell for it. <laughs> that's bait, man. Uh, yeah, I am. Um, hey, used to get hit I, with that in comment sections. It don't work no more. But used to. Uh, there was one guy on on Twitter, man. He he roiled me up something fierce the other day. I saw, so I saw that. I was like, because we had like an amicable solution to that before. He kept adding me in things, and I was like, don't bring me into co- conversations or fights you're having with other people. And <laughs> and and he was like, he's like, all right, Rand. And then like I see my name again. I was like, why was my name mentioned in this fucking thread? Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> you and I, were both thrown into it yeah yeah exactly i said keep i was just like a little keyboard warrior like yeah and yeah and he was like oh you showed up your clickbait merchant blah 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 blah. i was like man you have no idea what clickbait it looks like i definitely do not clickbait like it is just go away stop annoying me and then eventually i banned it was the first person i ever banned on anything i've never banned anybody on on youtube never banned anybody on twitter never banned never I was like, yeah, get away from me. You just annoy me. (laughs) Yep. Sometimes it just gets to that point. Uh, Paul, do you got any more? No, that's it. That's it. Um, I'm sure I had more, but, but they've gotten lost in the midst of people having conversations in their, in the the section. I can't find them. So I've been looking for them. Well, I got one more. This one's from dragon riders. Uh, I want to save for a custom water loop. Do you have any recommendations? Maybe something like Corsair uh hope i'm not late he's not late you got it in there you are good <laughs> um custom loops i'm not super familiar with personally so either of you guys on that one don't do it i like don't noctua do it. The, the, don't do it is is my answer to that um you will get minuscule performance increases and it's just so expensive that's my there opinion. was a time yeah I, i'm with you paul there was a time where it was it was great. It was like, yeah, do it because, you know, the thermal headroom that you gained, but these these graphics cards are pushed to the limits and they're all quiet now. Like these modern ones, there's very few that you're going to get that are loud. Yeah. And, and the CPUs are kind of, they're just like, the, the Ryzen chips are just going to run up to their thermal limit. They're just going to push it no matter what. Yeah. You, right. you get it colder, it's just going to pump more voltage into it and get hot again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I uh, my my opinion on it is just don't do it because you could just build such a faster PC. Like if you you could you could spend six seven hundred quid water cooling your PC, right? So Th- that that's half an OLED, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Get I an will OLED. say I will say if you've already got a beefy system and it's what you want and you want to do it because you want to do it, that's fine. Like yeah, do it exactly. then, but. Don't do it with the the idea that it's going to turn it into something better than what it is. Yeah, and always al- always use flexible tubing on your CPU. Trust me, always, 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 always. Oh God! See, I, I just remember back in the day, like we would take like the heat sinks. Uh, it was my sixty eight hundred GT in particular. It just had like a flat copper heat sink. So you'd rip off the aluminum fins. You'd go down to the hardware store. You'd buy copper tubing. You would solder the tubing directly to the plate. Then you'd shove your own tubes in there. Then you have an igloo cooler with full of ice. And yeah. Then you throw the tubes in there with a water pump. That's what real water cooling used to be because <laughs> you could make that thing literally run like twice as fast. Yeah. You, you don't get that anymore. So, yeah, to me, there's there's no point. No, I remember even go back to the 780, right? I had a, I had a 780. Um, you could make the 780 go to 1,400 megahertz of water cooler. Like, yeah, I had a, I had a, the last thing that I've had water cooled was my, um, I had my, my 1800X and 980 Ti. Yeah. So, so that's really how long ago that was. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was a modified, you know, I had BIOS modded 980 Ti with a 450 watt power limit yeah. on it and it was running 1550 megahertz and <laughs> it, it needed the water cooling. Um, I, had but, a, I had a Vega 64 um power cooler one and the cooler was so good on that that i ran the liquid cool bias on it and it never shut down or never oh wow yeah just nice. just, just ran a just ran a 1700 megahertz snow butter <laughs> like just yep <laughs> i would yeah. say before you water cool these days work on undervolting yeah 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 
Yeah, I think I think there's like if you're a genuine enthusiast, you've got the money, you got the build, you want to just make it look pretty. Yeah, absolutely. It's gorgeous. But, yeah, but like, do use soft tubing at least on just your CPU loop, because oh my god, <laughs> trying to take that thing apart if there's oh, something yeah. wrong, yeah. like yeah, if there's a bad memory <clears throat> stick and you can't get in behind the oh no, thank you, no, no. There's a reason why I use AIOs uh, to kill my PCs, not because they make the CPU any cooler than an air, than a decent air cooler. It's just because it's four screws, four thumb screws. You take it off. You get access to CPU. You get like rather than going around all these fin stacks, and you can't get your RAM out. And now that's the reason why I'm using it. It's just for easiness, taking apart, putting them back together. Um, and and to like I've done liquid cool builds before, uh, for other people and for myself, and it's just it's just a headache in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, and the performance is not there anymore. You don't get any. You don't. It doesn't go any faster, and it just costs way more money. So imagine if you imagine if you were like, oh, I've got three grand for a budget, like. And it almost a grand of it is 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 fixed up by fittings and tubing and <laughs> radiators and fans and that's why yeah. EPA and Alpha Cool and all of them are making AIOs now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's just easier and it's obviously more accessible. Yeah. Uh, plus, you could save that extra money and join you know other people's Patreon groups and support them. Then you can talk <laughs> to more of your favorite creators, which you could also do if you are a fan of this channel. Do you have a Patreon, Keith? We do not. We do not. We uh we we are ad supported on the website for the most part, so we don't we don't run extra ads on the YouTube channel and have a Patreon. So we we leave the the fans to, to support you guys. That's that's yeah. what I like to see. So Pre- appreciate that. Appreciate that. So yeah. Uh, but yeah. So instead of spending thousands of dollars on water cooling, that's what I recommend you do and save up for OLED. Yeah. Now, if yeah, you have I'll... everything in the world, go for it. Yeah, and also go over to the WCCF Tech uh, YouTube channel if you want the latest news, tech reviews, all that kind of stuff. You can yeah. subscribe there. We, I tried, I tried to deliver two videos a day, and they're just we look. I get to the point, I would bring the news, and then you can come see these guys for their uh, their commentary on, on the topics because we cover a lot of the same topics. I give you the gist of it. They get into the nuts and bolts. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. What your video is like three, four minutes long. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, you go into the bathroom, listen to me. You know. Yeah. There, there we go. That's perfect. Pilot That's squad. Def- Pilot squad, man. Yeah. Pilot. So, I, I don't know if you. I'm not sure if you want that hashtag, but it might yeah, happen no, anyway. No, no, we're all, we're, we're, all, we're all toilet squad, man. That's. I guarantee you, ninety percent of your content, Chris, is watched on the toilet. Oh, heck like, yeah. I mean, I I only watch you guys on the toilet. <laughs> yeah. I listen yeah. to you guys in the shower a lot. You know. <laughs> Bluetooth well, speaker. Look, I don't get a lot of. A lot of quiet time these days. So yeah, yeah. that's what you <laughs> say. Your your um your uh you know your wife is like, why are you watching YouTube? You know, meh, 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 meh. Mm-hmm. so you she close you the door. It. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the toilet. <laughs> all right. So for all you single guys out there, this is what happens when you have wives and kids and stuff like that. The bathroom literally is your only safe haven, or while you're recording something. That that's yeah, it. That's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Start a YouTube <laughs> channel. And you get a couple hours a night. <laughs> she's sanctuary how much money are you making that it doesn't matter it's quiet I'm, I'm making money go away leave me alone I'm doing my thing I'm just talking with my friends guys that's all i'm really doing <laughs> hey, all right <clears throat> so now that we just spawned like eight thousand new youtube channels i think our work here is done fellas <laughs> yeah exactly 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 <laughs> all right so we'll leave it there then chris if you want to wrap this one up all righty guys well uh that's really all i got for you here today i'll catch you guys in the next video bye 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 bye